So I have been busy, I have been busy, and I have been busy. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make one of these guys right here for dry air and after cooler. So now this is the DeWalt, but there are a lot of other air compressors pretty much the same as this one. I'm gonna be running a CNC plasma table, a soda blaster, and quite a few other tools that need really dry air. This thing has been working wonders. It really has been able to take out a good 80% of the moisture just in this first water trap right here. Very dry, very clean. So let's go over the tools, the parts, not just for the DeWalt 60 gallon air compressor, but Husky, uh, I think Mastercraft, I think Lowe's has the same one. A lot of people have the same air compressor and it's been very hard to find the fittings. So we are gonna repurpose some of that stuff as well. When a lot of air compressors first come, they come with one little line like this. It goes into the top of the air compressor, which is right here, and then it goes down into the tank. So it's just one straight piece. Blah, 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 blah. So here we have all of the tools. Now I'm not gonna count protective gear, a face shield, mask, safety stuff. I mean, we're working with compressed air, high compressed air, and uh, it, it can pop. Things can pop. Be safe, you know, take the risks and precautionary measures that you feel you need to take. You can use a hacksaw or a grinder. There's gonna be a bracket. The reason that I have a tubing bender is simply because I wanted something to be looking neater or tidier. You don't even need to buy the tubing bender. You can do things by hand. I like to get some of the fittings, make a little bit of snug and I pop them with the rubber mallets. A couple of wrenches. I needed a 13 16 and a 7 8 to be able to work the line. So good old crescent wrenches. The measuring tape, uh, you, again, you don't necessarily need it. You can just kind of wing it, but uh, measuring tape, if you want to measure certain lengths to get something neater and tidier. This first line here coming out of the compressor is roughly 33 inches. This line right here coming out of the radiator going into the water trap is roughly 27 inches long. And then this line right here going into the air compressor is roughly 35 inches long. In case that helps, measure it on your own, give it a little bit extra, you can always cut down. Needle nose pliers, which you may see is a little bit uh, clean right now around the edges. I use the needle nose pliers simply to start the flare on the pipes and clean out the, the edge and the burrs. Um, two, two pipe cutters. You don't need two pipe cutters, but I'm gonna show you what I did with one of these. This I left as a pipe cutter. However, I can just take the, the cutting wheel out and do this, uh, which has washers in there. Uh, it's not sharp at all. I took the cutting wheel out, I put a couple washers in there in order to make something that a lot of people have been struggling to find online. I see this guy right here, this little notch. I'll tell you about that notch when we're going over how to make it. Flaring tool, that's gonna be creating the taper for your pipes, for your fittings and then a little bit of wet dry sandpaper. Take out some of the sharp edges once you make your cuts. Picking up where we left off, I get to throw in a nice little pun right here, but we need a pick. I forgot about that tool. These are the supplies that you're gonna need. I'll show you using the pick momentarily. So this is the original part that was mentioned, and we are really reproducing this end and this end here. Now, uh, if you notice, this no longer has the, I believe it is a, reverse flare nut. And it has the same threading as a flaring adapter for hydraulic fittings, but it doesn't fit in. So we're gonna be reusing the reverse flare nut on that side, and I'll show you that you can actually get this fitting over here. Compression flare nut, I got this one at uh, Northern Tool. So those are easy to get, and I'll try to get you pointed in the right direction for those. So this part goes into the compressor, is now gonna be cut off and going into, it goes into the radiator. And then this side here that goes into the tank is gonna be coming out from our water trap. These are the materials needed. You're gonna need a water trap, which is actually already on the unit. I don't have another one to throw on the table here. You will need one half inch OD aluminum line. Some people have three eighths on their, their compressors. There are little changes between the Husky, the DeWalt, the whatever. There are so many of, of this air compressor with small changes rebranded. But this is one half inch OD. You have, you are gonna be using one compression sleeve, or at least I did. One nut, and this guy. I'll give you a close up here so you know what you're looking for. There, it's, there we go. 
you can get those. And I'll try to throw in some more information in the description down below. Uh, one and one quarter inch square tube perforated comes in handy because you'll be using two long bolts and a couple of crush washers in order to secure that to the compressor. The, uh, the self-draining water trap will attach to that. And then two short bolts will actually hold the uh, water trap onto the compressor itself. And then you'll need some nuts. I just used the uh, tight fitting nuts there. Good old yellow tape, which is good for less PSI than uh, our system actually allows, but I'm still using yellow thread tape. So I used four flare nuts. I used two of these. These are flare adapters. They go from, uh, what well, it's gonna say MIP, to one half inch OD, one half inch. I used some zip ties. You don't use cheap zip ties, get good ones. I'll show you uh, a link. This is what I ordered right here and you do have to adapt a little bit so they don't just go through the radiator. Soap in a spray bottle and your radiator. This is one that has been used by many people for a couple of years and is holding the pressure. So for this air compressor, one of the biggest keys that you can find to that puzzle is gonna be called a roll groover, I believe, or it could be a groove roller, depending on which manufacturer says it, but it's gonna be creating this little groove in your tube right here where two of the compressions go on. Now, this flare is gonna be going out to your radiator and then the radiator is gonna have a flare going out to the, um, the self-draining water trap. The water trap will have a flare attached to it and then goes back into an air compressor with that groove. So you really just need to focus on a couple things here, your roll groover and your flare. For the flare, I am using a cheapo flaring tool, a pair of needle nose pliers, just because it helps actually start the flare, and the homemade roll groover, which you can actually repurpose a pipe cutter if you have it like this. Just put your washer in there, make the two, the grooves that you need, put the cutting wheel back in there, and you only need one of them. But I'll, I have two now, so I'll show you. Let's just, uh, Show you how to make those cuts first. I know a lot of people do them differently, so they'll tell me all about how to do it better in the comments down below. By all means, I like learning things, so I'm not gonna shut you up with that, but after I cut my tube, what I like to do is take the needle nose pliers here, just very slowly work it back and forth. Now, I don't wanna push in too hard because then this could flare this out and I won't be able to get my nut on there. Make sure you get your nuts on first. Just want to take that edge out so this sharp edge can be ground down with your sandpaper. Just make sure that's smooth and ready to go. Now that you have your tubes prepared after your cuts, you're going to be taking your roll groover. That's the sharp one. The roll groover, I just have a couple of washers. If you can see in there, one washer holding it steady so it doesn't go back and forth and one washer for doing my cuts. Make sure that they can spin around and have to wreck my wheel or anything. I will take my existing tube that came off of the air compressor and I'm gonna measure the distance to make sure that I get those in the same place. And I will just put that washer down, tighten it, and slowly do the same as though I were doing a cut. Slowly working that around, a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter. Oh, too tight, back it off. No, we're good, we're good. So, all of a sudden now, I have my groove in place. From the old pipe, I took the washer off, the rubber washer off, just with a pick, very slowly working it around the edge. Popped the washer off, was able to reuse it, was able to reuse the reverse flare nut with the threading that actually fits up to all of the other pipe threading, uh, hydraulic fitting, whatever it, it may be. But I really couldn't find that part. I I went to Fastenel, I ordered through there, I've ordered parts that I've seen in videos, I've ordered independent parts off of Amazon, independent parts off of eBay, and the thread does not align to this side thread. Most everything that I found aligns to MPT or 18 thread, 20, whatever it is. Doesn't work, this does work. 
So now you've got your old part reused from the other side and you can run that line into your compressor. Works, holds, really nice. You put the washer back, you put your nut on, you put your O-ring back on there, good to go. Let's move on quick. Spent too much time on that already. The other side is gonna be a little bit more tricky. So I have, have my groove, if you would, and I have my compression nut. Get, get your nut on there first, make sure it's in the right direction, and you are going to take our compression sleeve. And this little guy is gonna be tricky because if you botch this, thankfully you bought enough tubing that you can do this again. So what you're gonna do is put your sleeve just barely over the edge of that groove right there. Just barely over the edge. See, now it is covering it, and then it goes just a little bit past. And you'll wanna secure this down there. Piece of tape really helps. I now came back, that's the cutting one. Careful there, you dingus. You're trying to make a YouTube video. Don't you want it to be factual like all the other ones out there? I put my roll groover on here and with the pipe cutter, up, 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 up. With this particular one, I got a freebie. It's got this groove right here in the wheels and that groove lines up to that compression sleeve and holds it in place. If you do not have the groove in there, you're gonna to wanna to have some other thing to hold everything in place. Now, I very barely, once I got it in there, I do apologize for trying to, trying to watch, watch this thing while keeping the camera in focus at the same time. I'm spinning it the wrong way. I'm leaving all this in there for you guys. Edit this out. There we go, snug it up and just give it a little pinch, back it off, rotate, pinch. And this, this can be a little bit tedious, this can be a little bit cumbersome, especially if you're lurched over a table trying to show people, trying to focus on a camera while trying to do this. It looks harder than it is. This probably took me all of 20 seconds when I was not focusing on. But what you're doing is, just getting to the point again, you're doing is crimping around this edge just slightly. And the reason that you wanna crimp around that edge just slightly is when your nut fits back onto it, you think, okay, it'll, it'll, it'll push in very, very nicely. Well, for me, it did. Uh, because I did a very slight, slight crimp. And what that does is it pushes the sleeve into this ring right here. And as soon as that sleeve is pushed into the ring right there, evenly around, and the nut slides over it, the nut is now pushing the sleeve onto this even further. Once you start to tighten it down, it will actually round that crimping out. Again, don't go too overzealous with it. You may have to do it a couple of times. Those sleeves came in a pack of three when I picked them up from Northern Tool. That's how you make one side and the other. And now I'll just show you the rest of the unit really quick. You probably figure out how to get the rest going by yourself. Sorry I took so long. Let's show the rest of it and then some benefits of blah blah snibbity doo Yeehaw! Here we have our repurposed nut and it just comes around. This was hand bent to this side. And then I use the tool to make a nice sharp bend there, sharp bend there. It's not too sharp. I mean, your radiator is gonna have a lot sharper bends in here once you come down to it. So don't worry about that. Flare fitting comes out. Flare fitting comes down. Gravity aligned. I know that it may be kind of hard to see, but it is actually correctly flowing all downward. So as the condensation forms in the radiator, comes down into your water trap. Flare fitting, this is the MIP fitting right here. Let me see if I can focus a little better, there we go. MIP fitting, MIP fitting to flare, coming out to the tube, and you'll wanna probably clean it up a little better than I. I'm going to a little closer to the switch that I want, the oil clean out, but then come straight down into the tank. Just keep tightening that guy down. So, the self-draining water trap, I will try to throw a link in the description to the self-draining water trap. Uh, this is the little bracket that was made. 
and you can see I have the two nuts in here. I used two holes, two holes. This is the one and quarter inch uh, tube. And then I did drill a new hole into the air compressor just to make that fit neat and tidy. And ignore this if you've already seen that. Don't forget your soapy water. I took mine up at 20 PSI at a time, then would have shut it off and I would check those fittings. This does have an automatic relief, pressure relief. So as I took it up in pressure, it would decompress the entire system. So I'd have to work a little bit fast, but I got everything fitting just nice. Welcome to my wonderful world of no-nos and boo-boos. I am so shorted for space that the Canon go-kart has to be resting up against the wall. I do have an extra hum dehumidifier over here that's taking moisture out of the air. Yes, I am running my manifold directly off the anti-vibration hose, which is a no-no. So if you are running a larger operation, you're still gonna wanna add more to this. Do not think it is the end-all be-all. Try to run that at least 20 feet to 40 feet of copper pipe to help you cool down the air even further before you hook up your water traps and filtration systems. If you notice over here to the left of the compressor, I have just a little bit of space. I am gonna try and put a refrigeration unit in there for the time being. This is working really well. This is quarter inch steel plate and I've been doing quite a few cuts with it. I just cut up uh, three sheets of different gauges. Yes, I could have gotten it sheared, but right now with the price of steel, they're charging like up to $90 to shear one full sheet. So I've got this lovely trailer. It is working out just fine with the plasma torch. I know I called it plasma cutter. I am gonna be doing builds over here. I have a pile of mini bike parts and uh, other stuff that's kind of secretive right now. You can check that out. Frame for it. Uh, race wheel barrel is gonna get a little bit of some upgrades. I have some dom. My line. I'm, I'm cutting just fine with it. It's really great. I really like this system. Hopefully it helped you guys out. Hopefully I earned a like from you today. And of course, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great day.